So let's talk about our ball screw dimensions. Now one thing is how to figure out what size on the end machine do you need. Now all your ball screws that, re that say standard end machining, uh, this is what it will look like. And they give you a chart with the dimensions for the different ball screws. Uh, the RM2005, which is what I'm using, is 20 millimeter outer diameter. Uh, the bearing diameter here is 15 millimeters. Uh, the dimension for the threads is 12 millimeters. Uh, and the dimension between the end of the threads and this shoulder right here is 41 millimeters. And then where your coupling goes is 20 millimeters. And this dimension for your coupling is 12 millimeters. Now this is your standard uh, A-type in machining um, for the fixed end. And then the floated end, uh, which is your B-type, is this is your standard dimensions for that. Now this will only be used probably on your x-axis uh, as I did. Uh, this happens to be my x-axis ball screw and you can see the floated end here. Now so how we go about figuring our dimensions if the standard end machining will work out for you, then that's great. You don't have to have a machine. And depending on the bearing type that you're going to use, the fixed end may be may work out just fine for you. Now here are standard radial bearings. And these bearings, the way these bearings are, I'm not an artist so bear with me but you have your outside bearing and then your inside bearing and they're shaped like this and this is shaped like this a little exaggerated there but then your bearing just rides in in the center like that and pressure this direction on the radius is what these are why these are called radial bearings um, and they're really good bearings uh, this is your standard bearing for most motors and that type of stuff it has this plastic seal right here they're pre-greased and this is the bearing that I'll be using on my floated end right here I'll be using a radial bearing now, you can use this on the your fixed end. Now, these are an angular contact bearings. And the difference is the way the bearings are seated in there. Um, it looks more like this. And the bearing rest in there like so and then the inner race looks like this and so as you tighten it in this direction it presses up against this race here and, and gives you a nice tight tolerance and these are angular contact bearings and so you can see that this is that it's tapered. These are tapered, so it gives you an angle contact, I guess. Um, it's hard to tell, but this side is where the taper begins over here. And then this side you can see kind of comes around, and that is this end. 
Um, so those are angular contact bearings. And you can see they don't have the dust seal. And I'm going to pack, I'll pack these with grease. But I'm going to be using these angular contact bearings. So my setup's going to be a little different than yours may be. Now, as I said before, if you use the radial bearings, then you can probably get away with just the standard end machining. Put a bearing here, and then another bearing, like so. Put two bearings, two radial bearings. And then you can put your nut on. This is the way I've done it in the past builds. And so my bearing block would look like this. And I would have a radial bearing on going in this way. This would be aluminum. And this would be the bearing right here. And then from this direction, I'd put another bearing. And so I'd have this bearing, uh, basically a hole from this side and a hole from this side. And then I would just slide my ball screw through like so. and then put my double nut. And that works really well. Nothing wrong with doing it that way. Uh, for this particular build, because I'm going with the angular contact bearings, they work a little different. Uh, they go back to back, like so. And then there's a spacer that I'm gonna machine that goes in here, and it only touches this outside race and it so it only going to be a little about halfway right there it doesn't touch the inside race at all and you put these together like so with the spacer in between and then as the inner race sits up against the shoulder and as I tighten with the nut the two inner races get pulled together and it gives me my angular contact and it gives me my adjustment for backlash so the way my bearing block would look my bearing block is going to just be like so. I have a hole here, sorry. This will all be aluminum. And I'll put both bearings in from this direction, like so. And then I'll have a bearing in. Then I'll have a spacer. I'll have a spacer and then I'll have another bearing then I'm going to have a cap that sits down in here now this cap will get bolted and it'll push pressure it'll put pressure right here and right here and push all these bearings in up against this spacer and up against this shoulder here and then I will slide my ball screw in and there'll be a sleeve that slides over my ball screw and it will push it'll push on this inner race with the nut so I have my two jam nuts and they'll push on this sleeve 
to put tension on my two inner races and that will give me my adjustment. It's a little more complicated and a lot of people just end up going with the radial bearings and if, if you do that then uh, like I said you can go with uh, a setup like so which is what I did for my G0602 and I also did it this way for my X2 conversion so by going with this particular setup I need to have enough room to have a spacer and then put a sleeve on here now the sleeve only has to be about a quarter inch long it doesn't have to be that long and that's just to slide and put pressure on this inner race when I tighten the nuts up so because I'm doing it this direction I had to have my ball screws machined and I got those machined by Chi and really the only dimension that changed that much is over the standard end machining is the thread length for me is 20 millimeters versus the 12 millimeters so I have eight more millimeters here and this dimension is about 29 millimeters and I made mine 30 and I'm hoping that'll give me what I need for my bill. So now that you know how to go out, go about figuring up your end machining, how do we figure out how long we need our ball screws to be? Okay, well, there's really not a mystery to this figuring these dimensions either. For your y-axis, our bearing block is going to sit up against this. So really we just need to measure how far it goes back. And on this particular meal, the original ball screw goes back to about where that paint ends. And so I just need to make sure that mine goes back the same distance. So I'll measure from here to there. And I should be good. So that dimension for me is about 15 inches. And then my bearing block is going to be two inches thick. And it's so the shoulder is actually going to be about a half inch beyond that. So if I made mine 15 and a half inches for my Y, uh, that should be good. And if you convert that over to metric, it's probably about 475 millimeters. 460, 475, somewhere in there. Uh, likewise, on the y, on the z-axis, I just want to measure from the top of my column. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can show you. I just want to measure from the top of my column here, because you can see our bearing mount is going to sit right there, and then. You can measure your original that's in there. Uh, the spindle can only go down until it hits the table. So if you went even to 20, probably 22 inches, that would be plenty. Just convert that over to metric and probably be around 600. Uh, 650 somewhere around in there and remember the ends of the Y and the Z ball screws they're just cut off square 
So you can actually get them long and cut them off with a cutoff wheel yourself if they happen to be too long. Now the one that will give you trouble is the x-axis but really it's not that difficult either. Uh, what you're going to do, or what I do, is so I just measure my table and it's 27 and a half and then my ball screw where the shoulder starts is probably the way I've designed my bearing blocks it's about half inch past the end here and so I just need to make sure that my machining here is about the same now you can always adjust this by making your blocks thicker on the ends and move this around so it doesn't have to be too critical so what I would do and what I did do is I just measured my table which was 27 and a half and I made the dimension between shoulder to shoulder 28 inches and that gave me a half inch extra and I'll make that difference up with my bearing blocks so really that's all you need to do send the dimensions to Chi over at Linear Motion Bearings and he'll make your block he'll make your ball screws up for you uh, don't forget to ask for the square nuts this is a M15 by 1.0 uh, it's a very fine thread and it's the jam nuts for these are not readily available uh, here in the US so make sure you ask for the jam nuts so that's pretty much it for figuring out the ball screws so thanks for watching the video Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.